Hey everyone, today we're going to be working on the ground-to-ground uh, -ground soccer kick problem where we find the velocity of the ball and the angle theta. So here we have our variables written out, um, which we're going to fill in, a uh, graph here, and a cute little cartoon about Newton's cradles. So let's get started. So first thing we have to do is click the ball, and we're going to get two uh, variables out of once the ball lands. We're going to get uh, the range of the ball and we're also going to get the time that the ball is in flight. And if we also wait for the ball to hit the ground, okay, so there we go. Um, we have 3.9 seconds and the range is about um, 26 meters. And also when we click the show question button here, we're going to get the uh, gravitational acceleration of the planet. So time is 3.9, um, range is 26, and the uh, acceleration is 7.7. .7. So let's go ahead and write that in here. All right. So, the first order of business that we have to take care of is finding the velocity in the x and the velocity in the y, since the initial velocity, um, which we'll write out the equation here, is going to be equal to vx squared plus vy squared and the square root of all that. So, the first thing we've got to find is the both the uh, velocities. So... The easiest way to go about this is to use the uh, r equals vxt equation for the velocity in the x, and we'll derive that the uh, velocity in the x is equal to uh, r divided by t, and then we plug in uh, what we know and solve for what we don't know. So the range is 20 point, no, 26 meters, and the time is 3.9 seconds. So the velocity in the x is going to be equal to, if I grab my calculator here, always prepared, 6.7 meters per second. And let's go ahead and box up our answer for now. All right, great. We're halfway there for the initial velocity. Now we're going to solve... Uh, for the height using the h equals one-half at squared equation. And we're doing this because we eventually want to get to the initial velocity in the y direction. And for the time here, we want to make sure that we're not using this 3.9, but instead we are using one-half of the time given. And that's because at the height here, it's only halfway between its initial uh, position and its final uh, position in the x direction. So because it's halfway like between the starting range and the final range, or starting point and the final point, sorry, because it's halfway there we're going to use half of the time uh, that it takes to... you, you get what I'm saying. Alright, so half of 3.9 is going to be, um, if I do real quick math here on my calculator, uh, 1.95. So the height is going to be equal to one half gravitational acceleration, which is 7.7, .7, times 1.95 squared. And since we're finding the height, we don't have to worry about the negative uh, negativity of the uh, acceleration since we always know that height isn't going to be a negative value. It's going to be a positive value. So without further ado, if we multiply all this junk together, we get that the height is about 14.6 meters. And now we can take that height and we can plug it into the equation h equals vy times t plus one half at squared. So 
oops, 14.6 equals vy times t. And since here, since we're finding a velocity, we have to take into account the uh, negativity of the gravitational acceleration. So since we have all of this stuff here, the 1 half at squared, which is negative or positive 14.6, we'll just make it negative here and then we'll add it to both sides so that gives us 14.6 uh, times 2 so 29.2 equals VY times uh, the time which is 1.95 and then we'll divide both sides by 1.95 and we'll figure out that the velocity in the Y is equal to 14.974 dot 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 so let's go ahead and round that up to uh, 15 meters per second so that's our velocity in the water let's box up our answer here oops okay scroll down a little bit um, all right, so now we have the velocity in the x and we have the velocity in the y. So we can plug it into this uh, initial velocity equation here. So the initial velocity is going to be the square root of 6.7 squared plus 15 squared. So that's going to be equal to the square root of 44.89 plus... 225. Oops, I don't know why I wrote a Y there. Uh, I meant to put an I. So the velocity in the, uh, <laughs> the initial velocity, excuse me, is going to be the square root of uh, 269.89. And so the velocity in the the initial velocity, I keep wanting to say the velocity in the I, the initial velocity is going to be the uh, square root of 269.89 which equals 16.4 meters per second. And we're going to go ahead and box up this answer. And we're at the home stretch here. All we have to find out now is the theta which is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of the uh, velocity in the y over velocity in the x and that will be equal to uh, if I can remember my numbers here uh, inverse tangent of 15 divided by 6.7 which equals uh, about 66 degrees and let's box that up Great, so now we have uh, our two answers. We have our initial velocity and our uh, theta angle, which is 66 degrees. And so let's go ahead and plug it into the website and see how, how we did. So go ahead and enter your name. Speed of the kick we said was 16.4 and the angle was 66 degrees. And great, we can see that our calculations here are correct. Um, hope your calculations are correct as well. Uh, feel free to email me about any questions you have. I know that one half uh, T, I went on a little bit of a tangent there, so that could have been a little bit confusing. Uh, so just feel free to shoot me any questions you have. I'll be glad to answer them. So hope to see you on the next example, and thank you for viewing.